I like to watch it when it, you know, I don't like it when it stops. When it's loading, so I like to watch it and then I just watch all of them at once. Tell anybody you need to repent. There are some of you, when you come to church, the first thing you should be doing is asking God for forgiveness. That's really what you, not because you lied, cheated, fornicated or anything, but because you are living in the vanity of your mind and of your time. You're wasting time. Time is important. You say, my people, they suffer because of lack of knowledge. There are people in this country, huh? There are people who graduated from this country that I know who had no fathers and who had no mothers to take care of them. And they paid their fees from first year to final year. They have no knowledge. They don't know the name of any Korean actor. They don't even know there is such a thing as Korean series. And they can't understand why those who are feasting on it can't understand the seriousness of life. What use is deliverance for you from ignorance if I don't preach this thing I'm preaching now? Hello? You see what I'm saying now? I have to dedicate some chapters <laughs> to addressing non-spiritual things. Because at the end of the day, you are not only spirit. You live in a body. Am I going to know somebody? Okay, so let me preach some more. Are you still in this church or have gone home? I came loaded for you, you notice? Yes, sir. <laughs> you must go home changed. Tell anybody, I need to know my God. Because I want to be strong. And because I want to do exploits. Yeah. That's my plan, that's my desire. As I began to know God, I saw God fixing my life one bit. One piece by piece. Bit by bit. Bit by bit. My story kept changing. My life kept changing. My finances kept changing. My relationships kept changing. Everything kept making sense. And I kept looking at my mates who, were, who kept going down. Whose story kept getting from, from here to there. Let me say this. There are some of you. Right now, you have no business thinking of relationship. I don't say all of you, but there are some of you. You, you know yourself. Did you hear what I said? And you know, folks always miss my words. I didn't say you have no business being in a relationship. I said you have no business thinking of it. <laughs> you see, you touch your head the first time. You, see, you think like he's saying, you know, I shouldn't be in a relationship. No, I think you shouldn't think it. Even the thought should not pass. You need that mind for something else. You're not in a face in your life now where somebody should call you and you, you call you like, hey, let's talk now. <laughs> you're like this. And you're broke. What are you talking about? You're broke. Brooklyn. Amen. Say so like, okay. <laughs> so nice to hear from you. So what have you been doing since? Talk nonsense, vanity. This one will talk vanity. That one will talk vanity. And guess what? They were in class together the whole day. They will get home. See, talk. May God deliver you from this problem. <laughs> Let me advise my sisters and brothers too. Don't let someone in ignorance carry their ignorance into your life to complicate it. To mess things up for you. Tell me, but I'm going somewhere. So I'm very careful with the kind of people I surround myself with. Number six. Six, right? 
I'm hearing some people say seven. I'm the six. Um, you don't want to have the ignorance of the power of hatred. Hatred. Tell neighbor hatred. Yeah, yeah. Deuteronomy 19, verse 4. Deuteronomy 19, verse 4. Um, this is so important because it's also one of the things which Paul begins to write about when he speaks about envies and all kind of things, right? Hatred. 19, verse 4. And this is the case of the slayer which shall flee thither, that he may live. Whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in time past. Now let me explain what is, what is here because if you've not read this verse, you may not understand. The man of God is writing through the help of the Holy Spirit. God is giving him instruction. God is saying, I want you to create a certain place where people can run to. Anybody who mistakenly kills somebody, he can run there before the avenger. Somebody else will decide, you killed my own, I'm going to kill your own back. But the Bible says he mistakenly killed the person. For example, you know, they went out. He gives an example. If you read further, you see it. He said, they, they went out to farm, for example, and he takes a ha- an, a, a ass, yeah? Or who? I don't know. It's been long. I've not used these words. An axe. And he begins to use it. And the Bible says if the head would fall off, for example, maybe it falls off and kills someone behind him. Mistakenly. But the person who he killed is somebody else's wife. And the man says, I'm going to kill you too. Or your own back. The Bible says he used to have a place, create a place of escape for him. For him because he did it mistakenly. He said, whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in the past. My emphasis is on the hated not. Please watch out how God is emphasizing the fact that he did not hate him in the past. Tell anybody, you must not hate someone, must not hate someone. At, all. at all. I know I'm saying it. Because there are a lot of people in church who hate people. With their tongue speaking self, body rolling self, you know, going under the power self, Bible speaking self, they have hatred for one or two persons. You have no business hating somebody, and you see the danger of it now. First John, go to First John. First John, the third chapter. Paul, listen, the, God doesn't want you ignorant of this. Hatred is a powerful force. Now, please pay attention how God puts a clause, an exemption clause. It must be somebody who has not hated that person in the past. Because if he has hated that person in the past, there is something. He said, behold. Oh, I didn't tell you the verse. From verse 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. First John 3 from verse 14. He said, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. If I hate my brother, I'm still in death. Next verse. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. I, I, I can see you're not getting it yet. He said, let it be that that person who killed that person mistakenly, let it be someone who did not hate. Because if he hated and that incident happened, the incident actually happened because of his hatred, even though it will not seem like it. Fast, he think it so easy. Do you know that moment when you wish somebody death? You actually kill the person. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but yeah, yeah that's, what God, that's, that's what the Bible is saying. Jesus emphasizes it to Jesus Christ. He says, he says, he says, he says, he says, he says, whoever will say raka to his brother is guilty of the same punishment for death. It's a serious issue. Church folks don't talk about this. And that's why you have, you know, everybody talking about, you know, I hate him. You know, I just don't like that sister. She likes to show herself in the choir. You know, is it not yesterday she just came? Tell anybody, there should be no hatred in you. There should be no hatred in you. Say, there should be no hatred in you. It says, it says, they will know you are my disciple by your love. Only love, tell anybody, only love qualifies us. Say, hatred disqualifies us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't hate people. I'm like to you, by the grace of God, I've never been able to hate any person. There's no person I hate. There's no person I hate. From the last time I can check, there's no reason to hate a person. 
I hate you. That word has never come out from my mouth. Except for preaching purposes like this. I just hate him. Why? From where? What nature is that? And, and, and this is why it's so easy for people to think everybody hates them too. Haters, haters, haters. Haters, 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 haters. Even the preachers. Preachers believe everything is about the enemy. Enemy, enemy. There are people who don't wish you were. There are people who don't wish you were. What about people who do? Sometimes people are too busy, don't have your time. I might not know somebody. The world is a busy place. People don't have your time. Let people be. If you don't have a hatred mindset, you can't be hated. And you can't hate people too. You're just like everybody. You just know some people are ignorant. You know what Jesus Christ says? He says, Father, forgive them. They are ignorant. They do what they do because of ignorance. Not because they hate me. Not because they have problems with me. They are ignorant. They are blind. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hey, pastor. Pastor, I want to leave the choir. You know, there are people there who don't like me. I know they don't like me. They don't like me. Nonsense. <laughs> Pastor, you won't understand. They hate me, really. They, they hate me. The way they treat me, pa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Nobody hates you. Life is just like that sometimes. Sometimes you just meet people. People admit you're meeting somebody from the first and they are different. They're trying to get used to you. They don't understand you also. You know, first year you two are haters of each other. Final year you are the one say bestie. What changed? What changed? You grew to understand each other. You suddenly realize she never hated you. You just need to understand. You're coming from Nigeria or from somewhere, you know, uh, and then she's coming from somewhere else. You have different mindsets. You meet for the first time and then there are sparks. It's normal. You just got to realize that this is the normal thing. I don't hate him. She doesn't hate me. So the last thing you should be thinking of is hatred. When you don't think someone hates you, it becomes easy for you to talk things over, to resolve issues. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Just tell me. You know, like, you know, I mean, we are, we are roommates, right? So you can resolve it. So tell me. What, would, what don't you want me to do and all that thing? You know? And God gets the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody now? Yeah. So God doesn't want you to be ignorant of how Powerful hatred is. It is equal to murder. Hello? So I don't want you either to be in a church like this and be hating people. Amen. Amen. The more you hate someone, thank you, sir. The more you hate someone, the more you are practicing witchcraft. The Bible says his mother. You are one of those people who are presenting that person's name to the spirit of death. You'd rather the person leave this vicinity and the realm of life. Hello? Tell anyone, don't hate on me. Say, don't hate on me. God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Number seven. Amen. Amen. Romans, the first chapter, the 13th verse. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You should have had a morning and an evening session. <laughs> Praise God. Now, I would not have you ignorant. I, I, I don't know if you're seeing how specific Paul always goes. Now, I would not have you ignorant. Tell me about God, God. speaking through Paul. Speaking He's saying, saying he doesn't want you ignorant. He want you ignorant. And he tells us exactly what he doesn't want us ignorant of. He says, now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I propose to come unto you. 
but was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. You know, um, you must not be ignorant of a father's love. You must not be what? Of a father's love. Write that down. I know you, you, you understand now. You must not be ignorant of a father's love. Amen. You will not know how powerful love is until when you convince yourself that it isn't there. When you reach a point where you can tell yourself, he doesn't love me, or she doesn't love me, everything from there on goes sour. Paul is sticking to them. He says, he says, as your spiritual father, he says, I always want to visit you. Often times. Look at it. He says, there are many times I want to visit you. There are many times I have proposed to come to you, to be with you. I really love to be with you in every meeting and in every service. Say, but the responsibilities are much. There are many things I'm doing that you have no knowledge of. From your own perspective, you think, you know, it's just one thing, you know, like, uh -uh, is it not just 10OP? I will not have you ignorant of this fact. If not, it can breed challenges. You know, like, you know, I was in the hospital. Pastor Frank, so why didn't you call me? They didn't even visit me. Nobody even came from the church. You know, nobody cares for me. When you think they don't love you, you begin to, it becomes easy to rebel. It is the devil that shows in your heart. But, but you know that a husband and wife can be separate for years. So long as they are convinced of each other's love, they will stay true and faithful. You see, whenever the love is in doubt, things get sour. There are some children today who tell you they have no relationship with their father. Their father doesn't care about them. They tell you, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see him. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't love me. They either got it by revelation or, from, or by... Transferred ignorance from their mom. They heard their mom say it again and again and again and again and again and, again and they imbibed it. It became their own rema. And so they believe, you know, like, he doesn't care. And yet what you don't know is that many times he has tried to reach you. But your mom was the problem. This applies to all fathers, starting from my Heavenly Father. There are times when you don't get things that you want really from God. So people begin to misbehave, they begin to rebel. Do you know there is nothing, I've reached a phase in my life right now, there is nothing that happens come, 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 uh, come winter or summer, there is nothing that can change the certainty in my life of God's love. Whether I'm rich or I'm broke, I know that I'm loved. Tell anybody I know that I'm loved. This is, this is, why, this is why some people backslide. We are, I, you see, when you know someone loves you, you still want to come home. Even if you don't love the person. Are you understanding me? When you know someone loves you, you know he loves me, and if I go home, I have no place to sleep. But if I go there, I know he's going to give me a place to sleep. You still want to go to God. Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant of the care and of the love I have for you. I've wanted to come to you always, every time. There are things I want to do. I want to speak to you. I want to open your eyes. I want you to see visions. I don't enjoy stressing you. There are things I want to do to you. But... But there's a gap between us. There are things I've told you to do you don't do. Paul says, many times I've wanted to be with you. I want to have fruit with you. Paul says, I want to preach the gospel everywhere. To you, to the Romans also, if you read further. I don't just love preaching it to, and, and writing only to the, uh, to the people in Ephesus. I want to preach to the Romans also. So I want some fruit from you too. I want to come and see, oh, David is doing well. Say, David is doing well now. Say, yeah. 
Say, oh yeah, he finally shaved. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I want to see David transformed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interested in David. Odesh, rather, sorry. Odesh, God bless you. Amen. Odesh. You see David, amen. Praise the Lord. I don't see him changed. He finally shaved. You get it now. Praise God. He finally shaved. Hallelujah. He finally shaved. I'm so interested in him. I'm interested not only in his outer looks, I'm interested in his, in his looks. I'm, I'm, I'm interested at a point in his life where I can look at him and I'm like, oh, um, so, so, when, so, so, so when are you getting married? And he's like, um, like, Dad, this is so awkward right now. We're talking about this. I mean, yeah. I'm like, okay. Hmm. There's this guy at home, you know, like, okay. You like him? Yeah, yeah. You know, like, he loves you. Say, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So, so what, what, when are you looking at settling down? And then the topic changes, the conversation changes. It's no longer just about, you know, why weren't you in prayer meeting? It's not about your life. It's now when is the wedding? I'm not going to somebody. That's the relationship we share. It's not just about tongues. We're really interested. So if we tell you, for example, today to stay away from some things, there are reasons for that. There are days we're also going to come and tell you, you need to get involved in something. There's a time every, for everything. The days you're going to call someone and you're like, uh, Edda Solom. Ah. Amen. <laughs> Notice how quiet that place is now. <laughs> See, I, I, intentionally, <laughs> I intentionally call his name. Amen. You see how the place becomes quiet. So when are you bringing someone home? Praise the Lord. <laughs> we don't want you to only speak in tongues from today to tomorrow. Hmm? At some point, huh? you have to bring a wife home. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? At some point, you have to bring children. Amen. We want to see you moving into church one day, park your car by the side, First child comes out. Second child comes out. Pretty wife comes out. All of you hold hands and you are going to church. God bless you, sister. You're catching it. Huh? Amen. She's catching it. Amen. God is interested in every area of your life. So for me, it becomes easy. When I know this, I know if God told me not to do something, it becomes easy for me to follow it. Because I know he got my back. He got my interest. He's not trying to keep me away from something. He's trying to get me somewhere. Tell me what God is thinking about you. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. I'll take one point and then we'll stop. I thought you were going to say I should continue, but well, you don't want me to. So, so you say I was reading your heart. Amen. No, it's okay. I'll stop here. I'll stop here. Amen. <laughs> Praise <him. laughs> Praise the Lord, I miss you too. Amen. What no <laughs> I can go. We still have a lot of space for that. What number are we now? Number eight. You don't want to be ignorant of the troubles which leaders face. Amen. Second Corinthians one from verse eight. First Second Corinthians one verse eight. Second Corinthians one verse eight. Second Corinthians one verse eight. Hallelujah. You know what Paul is saying this time? And I love the fact that he doesn't say I this time. He says we. All of us leaders and pastors and elders and apostles and prophets and evangelists and elders, everybody. He says, we, we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble. Tell neighbor, the leaders face troubles. Say leaders face troubles. Amen. There are things we go through you don't understand. There are things that happen to us you don't understand. There are moments we need our space you don't understand. There are moments when we are not fine, but you still need something from us. 
There are moments when things are difficult and all we really need is just space. There are moments when we need help and we don't have any person to help us. There are moments when we are just as human, just the same way you are human. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia that we are... 